This is the third section on chapter two from the Applied Year Two book, which is on conditional probability. And here we're going to look at how we can use um, conditional probabilities uh, in Venn diagram problems. So we can use the information that we've got in a Venn diagram to help us solve these types of problems. So for example, if um, I had uh, a Venn diagram like this, let's say I've got A and B and I had some numbers in here, so it's our 10, 3, uh, 7 and 5, like this, and I wanted to work out, uh, so ones we already know, let's say I wanted to work out the probability of A and B, well, um, it's out of 25, and they're 3 out of 25. If I wanted to work out the probability of, um, let's say, for example, not A and B, so this would be everything that's not in A and in B, so I can see that uh, the stuff that's not in A, well, I might do a bit of shading to help me with this, Okay, so let's shade everything that's not in A, first of all. So that's all this stuff here. That's not in A. And let's shade all the stuff that's in B. So if I shade all the stuff here that's in B. Okay, this symbol means um, where I've got any shading. And that's everything apart from the 10. So that will be... 15, so that's all the shade, and I've got 15 out of 25. But we can also do these types of things. Okay, what's the probability of A given B? Now, I said in the last lesson, you can think of this as just out of B. So B altogether is 10, so it's just out of 10. So out of all the stuff that's um, out of all of B, how much of that is A? Well, three. So that'd be three out of 10. So the B actually gives you the denominator and the bit where they sort of overlap gives you the numerator. So let's have a look at a uh, problem. And uh, I would, yeah, it says draw a Venn diagram, but I would probably draw a Venn diagram to help do this. Right, okay. So we've got A, B, and we've got the union of A and so we've got the intersect of A and B. So I can put uh, 0.15 in that overlap, always fill in, fill in the overlap first, which means that I've got 0.4 left for A. And if I take 0.15 away from 0.4, I'm left with 0.25, so 0.25 goes here, and then there's going to be something left for the outside, so 0.4 plus 0.15 plus 0.25, that makes 0.8, so 0.2 is left for here, so this is A, this is B. Right, and straight away, we've gone into something where it's asking about conditional. What's the probability of A given B? In other words, how much is in B? Well, B altogether is 0 0.4. And how much of all of B is A? 0 0.15. Okay, we'd probably want to simplify that because you don't really want to leave that as a uh, a decimal mixed with a fraction, so 15 over 40, which we can simplify if we want, or leave that as it is, divide both by 5 to give you 3 over 8. Second bit, the probability looks a bit more complicated of B, given that it's A in union B. So again, the same principle. Right, what is A union B? Well, A union B is 0 0.8, and how much of that A union B is circle B, and that's 0 0.4. So out of 0 0.8, so that's 0 0.8, 
out of that 0 0.8, 0 0.4 of it is B. Okay, so that's a half. And the last one. So the probability of not A given not B. Right, okay. So how much of this Venn diagram is not in B? So that's 0 0.6, the 0 0.2 and the 0 0.4. Okay, and how much of that stuff that's not in B is not in A? Now I'm going to use a bit of shading to help me. So I'm going to shade my diagram since I'm done on the last question. So let me shade all the stuff that's not in B like this. And how much of the stuff that I've shaded is stuff that's not in A? Uh, well, it's just this this is the only thing that I've shaded that's not in a 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 over 0 0.6 which is 2 over 6 which is a third so you're now in a position where you can do exercise 2c on pages 25 to 27 of the textbook